All right, so we're gonna be doing brakes and bearings and seals on this trailer. It is a 25 foot gooseneck. These are 7,000 pound capacity axles. I think they're both Dexter brand, but that doesn't really matter. When it goes to bearings and brakes, they're pretty universal. There are some unique ones out there, but starting from like 90, 1990 and forward, they're all pretty well standard. So the first step is to jack up the trailer. Um, on tandem axles like this, it's recommended to jack between the axles on the frame. I can't do that on this application, but I will be jacking on the equalizer bar, which is that link right there. You have to be very careful doing this because that is a moving part. So the way I'm gonna jack it is dead center on the pivot which is right there. Next step is to remove the wheel. guy told me that he would fill it with grease about every month. Yeah. The spindle on this is D-shaped and the retainer tab is going to be on that D section. So you can see part of it right there, that little shiny bit, and it needs to be folded inwards. Um, I don't feel one on this, but could be wrong because the other two were also not set right yeah this one was not set right or somehow got broke I don't know but go ahead and remove the nut yes yeah, so you can see the one tab right there is broken and the other was never set so maybe it was just broke off I don't know I didn't feel it when I was cleaning so For quick reference, this is what that nut retainer is supposed to look like. It just sets on top of the thrust washer like that, but behind the nut. That's what this one looks like. So some parts that came out with the drum, what's left of the friction material, and the adjuster. I wasn't expecting the adjuster, but this kind of. Next step would be to disconnect the brake harness or brake wiring harness. Um, I don't have any wires run to this, so I don't have to worry about that. And then to remove it, it has five nuts around the spindle. Uh, I have to get this arm out of the way first. that that's how it comes off so since the brakes mount to this flange here it's really important that it's flat and clean when the new ones go on there are centering pieces um, or bosses in here 
it's like a stamp part of the flange one here 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 and one on the bottom it's kind of hard to mess this up but when you install this on there it's kind of like a wheel so make sure that the bosses stick out inside of this round part and then it's not on top of any of those so like that one other thing when you put this on is make sure that your wires don't get pinched because they may try to do that like this one is just make sure those are out of the way now there is a torque spec for this it depends on the grade of the hardware that you're using so grade 5 hardware nut and stud I think is 30 foot pounds 25 or 30 foot pounds and then if it's grade 8 like in this case they get torqued to 45 to 50 I'll be torquing them to 50 Now that the brakes are installed, the next step is to do the bearings. Um, you should always replace bearings with the races, never just the cones. And it's because during the manufacturing, they're kind of mated to each other. And between different brands, different batches, different years, there could be some variances between the cones and the races. So it's always best and recommended to replace them in sets or pairs. So there's two races in this hub and I'm gonna pull those out now. First step, I'm gonna get the excess grease out though. And the same as before, just using my finger for right now. I forgot to get that bearing out. So that's gonna be the next step to get the seal out, which looks like it's about to fall out already because it's not installed all the way and then the bearing that sits behind that. So removing these seals is pretty easy. I'm just using a claw hammer. I'm also gonna be using a seal and race driver to help with some of it. Now that those are out, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up really good and get it ready to put in the new races. I'm going to use a hammer just to get it started. Don't hit it hard or you will damage the race. Next step is to pack the bearings with grease. And there's several ways to do this, but I do the, I guess the traditional method. And that's to roll it and force the grease in by hand. 
So I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and do both. That way I'm not skipping steps and getting my hands dirty twice. A little bit better. All the way to the top. Also, I didn't say it earlier, but you should put a little bit of grease on the inside lip of that seal before you install it. And now that everything is pretty much ready to go back on the spindle, I'm going to go ahead and degrease everything one more time. Careful not to snag the seal on the spindle too. And next will be the thrust washer. And then the lock washer and then the spindle nut the guide that i was following for installing this or setting the pretension on it was to tighten it while rotating the drum and Stop tightening it when you feel like significant resistance. Uh, there's probably some others like torque to 35 or 50 foot pounds and then back it off a certain amount. But I, I want to say a good rule of thumb is if you have a dial indicator, just to set the bearing end play between like two and eight thousandths. Okay, so there is pronounced resistance with that now. And in the guide, it said to back it off one full notch of the nut. So you can see it's lined up with this notch. So we'll go back one notch to line it up with the previous one. It should be right there. On other things, that is a dirty symbol. like that and that's that's an uncomfortable amount of movement but you know if it locks it in place it it locks it in place I didn't design this but you know if that's what it's got and that's what it's got so next thing to go on is the dust cover So the next step in this process, or maybe it could have been done earlier, I would say is to go ahead and reconnect the brake wires. But as I said with this one, I don't have any wires going to it, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. But that would be the, the next step is to make sure that those get connected. And before I put the wheel back on this, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the mounting face a little bit with a wire brush. I'll double check the torque on these it is actually 120 i think the spec is 105 to 120 since there's a bit of rust on these i'm just going to go for the 120. oh yeah and the size for these is a 21 but could be different so that's all for this video the only thing i didn't include was adjusting the trailer brakes um, you'll, you can look up a guide. It's, it's really straightforward. Um, but check out what I actually removed from this trailer 
And remember when I bought it, I was told that everything was good to go and that it worked great. Anyways, thanks for watching.